This is JBigTicket23 from GreenPCGamers.com. In this video, we're going to show you how to install a secondary processor kit in an HP Z620 workstation. So the first thing you want to do is go to GreenPCGamers.com and click on the blog page on the top. Search Z620 in the articles. And that'll bring up uh, an article called HP Z620 Gaming Computer and Other Upgrades. All of the parts that we're going to show you in this video, you can locate on this page. Um, so if you scroll down, um, you'll see right above the processors, um, the optional secondary Z620 HP processor board, as well as a second line for the heat sink. So we give you the part number so you can try to hunt these parts down. Otherwise, we do give you links where you can try to order them. Now, with this kit, you're also going to need a processor. And you have to match the processor step code that's on your onboard processor. So if you don't know what that is, um, you'll want to verify, maybe pull off that uh, the heat sink on the existing processor and check out the step code and match it for the second proc. If you're just upgrading processors um, and you're going to do both of them, uh, check out uh, below here on greenpcgamers.com. Uh, we have... A bunch of awesome processor upgrade options based off of your system board because there are two different system boards and your system board will determine which cpus you can install okay so let's get to the video of the install okay so we've got our hp z620 workstation we have a riser kit we have our cpu we have some heat paste and we do have some memory that we're going to install as well uh, because this secondary CPU riser board gives us four additional memory slots to add more memory. Um, what you don't see in the picture um, is the heat sink, uh, but we are going to show that to you later on in the video. All right, so we're going to install uh, four additional 4 gig uh, DDR3 14900R modules into the system. Now we're matching the existing modules that are installed in the system board. So um, you may have 10600R modules. Go ahead and match them. All right, here's our CPU. Uh, we're going to install an E52687W uh, eight core CPU, and that's exactly what we have already installed on the system board CPU. Um, here's a little sneak peek at the part number for the riser. Again, the part numbers are located on greenpcgamers.com. Search article Z620. All right, so we do have to remove our side panel to access uh, the system board, which is where we're going to mount that secondary CPU riser board. All right, so this system originally came with a single processor, so it's got a plastic cover over where we're going to mount that CPU riser. But before we remove that, um, we are going to install our processor and our memory and our heatsink. So as you can see, there's a little flip on the right side where you can remove that plastic. Now be really, really careful with the pins on this CPU when you remove the retention clips like we're doing um, because if you touch those pins, you're going to damage them and then you're going to have to get another riser board. Do not touch them. All right, so we're going to line up our CPU riser board so we can install our processor. So there are four notches on the CPU. Um, you can see right here, right here, right here, and right here. And so we just have to line up those notches with the slot and just drop it right into place very gently so you can see you lined them up if you lined it up, if you didn't line them up perfectly in the first shot just pull it out and try it again all right so we need to put our cover and retention clips back on like you see and then we're ready to add some heat paste to this cpu Okay, so we like to use heat paste from a company called uh, Shinetsu Microsci. Um, you can normally pick this stuff up online, um, you know, at your favorite vendor uh, or like eBay or other places. So all you want to do is drop like a pen cap top into the middle of the CPU. Because what's going to happen is when we put that heat sink on and it heats up, it's going to evenly spread throughout the processor. If you put too much heat paste on, it's going to make a huge mess. So just, you know, copy exactly what we did. All right, here's our heat sink and fan combo. It's kind of an obscure looking heat sink kit, but it fits perfectly on this riser board. So it mounts like so. 
There are four T15 screws we're gonna have to tighten as well as we do have to plug in the fan to the riser board so that the fan can keep that CPU cool. So here's your four screws. The, the fourth one is actually right in the middle of the heatsink, and you'll wanna use a T15 or a, a thin flathead to tighten those. All right, so now that we've got our heatsink uh, installed, we kind of fast forwarded through that. We're gonna install four of these DDR3 memory modules. And again, these match what's on our system board already. So basically, we just had to line up the notches like so, and then just click each side into place. If it doesn't click in perfectly, it means the notch is probably not lined up. And there isn't much you know, work to actually push these into place. So again, line up the notch like you see and then shimmy in right to left or left to right, however you like to do it. And we're gonna put the last two modules in. So we have 24 gig already installed, so this is gonna get to a, get us to uh, 40 gig even, which is kind of a weird amount of memory, but you know, 40 gig is 40 gig. All right, line up the notch and go ahead and click them in, left to right. If you push it down in the middle, it most likely won't click in evenly. So um, if you copy exactly how we install these modules, it's simple. Okay, so we've got our processor and our memory installed. Let's put the black shroud back on. Now we gotta open up our side panel again. And at this point, we just need to remove that, blast, uh, that, that black plastic cover that's protecting that the pins for the secondary CPU riser board. So right in the middle there, you can just pull up and kind of shimmy it right off. And now we have access to those pins. Okay, so you may be wondering where the power is. Um, if you look on the left side of the board, actually we're gonna show you the pins and then look on the left side. This is where you're going to get power. Now, this is kind of cool because it's actually mounted into the chassis. And that's where you're going to get your power. So if you line it up properly, which we're going to show you how to do, um, it'll go right into those two slots. Uh, first, we want to hit these levers, a little green button to push. Once you hit those levers, they'll pop out. And that's how you're actually going to lock it into place. So once you clip those back in, you slide your board right in like so. You can click it into place. And then also what's really going to hold it into place is the side panel. Okay, so our board's installed. Everything looks good. Put your side panel back on. And go ahead and put, uh, you're going to have to go plug it back in to your monitor, your keyboard, your mouse, all your other peripherals. All right, so we fast forwarded. We've gone into the F2 setup. We're just gonna verify that we're seeing two processors and our upgraded memory. Uh, and it's good because we're seeing our uh, 40 gig of RAM. And then we have our first processor right here and our second processor right here. So everything's working perfectly in the F2 setup. That's great. Now let's go and verify in Windows 10. So first we're gonna go right click on start, go to system. Uh, we see both processors as well as our 40 gig of RAM. So it's great, Windows is recognizing it. Now let's go to the device manager. Um, with HyperThread, this is gonna show up as an insane amount of uh, threads um, because these are both eight core processors. So now we have 16 physical cores. Um, so it's gonna show up as uh, 32 threads, which is crazy, look at that. So everything's working perfectly. Uh, we've had a, a successful install. Um, if for some reason this install doesn't work for you, uh, a couple things that you wanna double check is make sure that you have matching step codes. Make sure you're matching your memory from your motherboard. Uh, if you don't match the step codes in the processor, you'll get a, a microcode mismatch or you just won't get video. Um, if you do upgrade both processors, make, make sure you upgrade your BIOS before you do that. Um, other than that, it's pretty self-explanatory, um, and you know, watching this video should help you out big time. 
Um, if this video did help you, uh, make sure and uh, subscribe to our channel. Helps us out big time. Also, like GreenPCGamers.com on Facebook. We do monthly giveaways for cool peripherals and other hardware. Um, so definitely check us out on Facebook and like it if you like uh, free stuff. Um, thank you so much for watching.